Hello, it's uh, George Hinchliffe here from the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain, and I'm answering some questions that uh, uh, people have sent in to us that uh, they'd like me to respond to. So here we are. Number one is uh, uh, Susan Harder. How old were you when you started playing the ukulele? Uh, she says she was 55 and her mum was 18. We both amazed ourselves that we could do it and had tons of fun. Well, I think that's right. You can come to it at any stage of life and have some fun. Uh, you can work hard at it and become uh, uh, someone who's got loads of chops, as they say, on the ukulele, or just play a couple of tunes and a couple of chords and have some fun. Uh, having fun is the main thing, I think. Um, I played the ukulele when I was a kid, and my father brought one home some, somewhere or other, and uh, we, I put some bits of string on it, ordinary string, just to pretend to be playing. And after a while, I said to my father, can't we uh, um, get some real strings? And so we went to a music shop run in Sheffield by this guy called Len Stewart, who's mentioned in Chris Spedding's autobiography. And uh, Len uh, gave me some strings and a tutor book and talked to me about music. He's a great bass player, actually, string bass. And he also got me into Mes Mesro and his book, Really the Blues. And so as a little boy, I learned far too much about the underbelly of 1920s American jazz. And eventually I became, I suppose, a clean living schoolboy uh, in Britain. Uh, who in the end knew far too much about the slang for drugs and cat houses in the 1920s, while surrounded by people with long hair in the 60s and 70s who were taking LSD and goodness knows what else, uh, and listening to a different sort of music. But but after a while, I realised that it was all the same sort of music, uh, and that uh, it, regardless of genre, even though pop music grew out of jazz and blues and folk music and stuff, uh, regardless of genre, uh, the notes were all the same. So whether it's uh, Beethoven or... Um, Howlin' Wolf, uh, an A is still an A, and you can uh, do different genres with the, the same notes. Okay, so this is uh, Ain't She Sweet, that uh, I learned from <laughs> Len Stewart. Question two. Mark Steele said, I loved your sea shanty version of Pinball Wizard. Any other rock perennial that could be worthy of similar treatment? Well, I always think that the, uh, the cliched songs are the best ones for the, for the, for the ukulele orchestra. Uh, so, Born to be Wild, I Who Have Nothing, Sympathy for the Devil, something like that. Some just aren't worthy of, uh, of trying to do with the ukulele orchestra method. That might be personal taste, uh, but I think that the ones that are already sort of tongue-in-cheek or a, a certain amount of parody about them aren't uh, suitable. They're more problematic. So, for example, in my view, Bohemian Rhapsody, while being a fine song and an uh, uh, interesting song and a big hit, um, and so people were saying, oh, that's a cliche, you ought to do that one. I think it's uh, it's got elements of parody uh, and uh, it's kind of... Um, <clears throat> in a way taking a mickey out of itself uh, as well it's it's, got, it's quite a complicated thing and therefore to try and twist it a bit with the ukulele orchestra's methods uh, wouldn't be right because Freddie Mercury and co have already got something quite uh, complicated going on there so I think we'd be over egging the pudding by trying to do that one I think there has to be a certain amount of gaucheness or of purity present for the orchestra to be able to make a contribution by twisting it a bit so there'd be no point doing a Tom Lehrer song. It's already too twisted, and similarly, overt comedy songs are often aren't right. You know, the exceptions to every rule, but I think that's, as a uh, general principle, that's uh, fair enough. David Alford, hello, he says. We, uh, I really like the UOGB version of Konig von Deutschland from the album Juckwerk, um, <clears throat> which has got a number of German elements to it because uh, we were touring quite a lot in Germany, um, as we still do. And uh, he says, I'd love to see a video of this performance, but couldn't find any on the web. I don't believe there are any. Um, it's not a thing we've done live very much. 
I wasn't familiar with the song before encountering the UOGB version and had to look up the Rio Reiser original. I don't speak much German and I had to look up the translated lyrics. However, I was impressed with George's vocal delivery on the verses as it seemed quite a tongue twister. He was wondering if I'm fluent in German. Ha <laughs> ha, well, uh, the song itself is a kind of a, a, a German pop cliche in that lots of people have covered it or referenced it. I suppose every Thomas and Dick and Harold has done a version of it. So in that sense, it's the sort of thing that the ukulele orchestra could do relative to what I was saying before. Our colleague Viola is German, and she organises lots of our German uh, gigs and things, and she coached me in uh, speaking. Um, I couldn't do it very fast, though, so we did it slower than uh, Rio Reiser. There exists a version of Viola singing this uh, song. She was in choirs, and she still plays the cello. Uh, so maybe we'd, we can include that recording on a, a bonus as a bonus track on an album of rarities one day. Alas! <clears throat> My German hasn't improved since uh, I was at school when we learned how to say the virgin is in the tree, uh, die Jungfrau ist im Baum, uh, and the shorthand typist is under the table, die Stenotypistin ist auf dem Boden, no, unter dem Tisch, sorry, on the floor, under the table. Mm. Why we learned those phrases, I have no idea, but we did at school, and uh, thank goodness I've never found a suitable occasion to use those phrases. Um... Alan Jewell says, is there a song you've made a start on and then abandoned? And is there a song you'd like to go back to? Well, Beethoven's Fifth is a piece which is still unfinished as far as we're concerned. We had a go at it, got part way through it and then stalled. We really should go back and finish it. Uh, we've also tried uh, Extreme Ways by Moby and Royals by Lord Lordy and uh, Still Alive, the theme from Portal. Uh, but uh, although individuals within the organisation thought they were good ideas, the band as a whole seemed unconvinced, or, or perhaps our way of approaching them was unconvincing. Gregor Nowak, Nowak, or is that Novak? Nowak, have you ever considered performing a rock opera like Tommy? Yes. In the early days, we did some bits from, from it. We had to go at 5.15, Out of My Brain on the Train, and The Acid Queen. Perhaps, uh, though, that's all a bit of self-parody. The, uh, the manager of uh, The Who, um, Kit Lambert, was the son of Constant Lambert, the composer, who always liked the highways and byways of pop and uh, jazz and stuff and encouraged cross-fertilisation. So I, I, I'm sure that his influence via Kit uh, became part of uh, what The Who did with the uh, rock opera stuff. And so and maybe it hasn't got the integrity and the simplicity which I think is required for uh, creating an opening for twisting it. Oh, we used to play that thing. How did it go? I don't know put it on this one here. Different instrument. <clears throat> Sandman. It's uh, basically the same chord sequence as that used by the Who in uh, uh, Out of My Brain on the Train, the 515. Where... So uh, F uh, major 7. C G seven uh, C um, major seven, and then of course they go into the riff with. Uh, Terence Anthony says, "How does such a small instrument do so well with jazz songs and the more complex patterns and chords?" It amazes me. Cheers. Well, cheers to you, Terence. Um, I think the re-entrant arrangement of strings on a, a normal tuned ukulele enables tight inversions of chords to be made quite easily, like uh, sort of instant uh, close harmony, like the chordettes or a barbershop quartet. So instead of it being spread out like a, uh, you might do on a piano, it's all in one octave. And so you get uh, quite a tight uh, grouping 
which is quite good if you have a bass as well and then vocals somewhere else. It divides the, the territory of the sort of musical altitude up in quite an interesting way. Um, <clears throat> it's also good for, what do they call that stuff, campanile playing, where you let the strings ring. Um, people say, oh, what is that? I don't get it. And uh, If you want to hear what that sort of thing is, you could listen to the same sort of thing done by instruments with more sustain like brass or wind instruments, and then you'd hear the, the sound more, you'd realise what's going on. So uh, there's this piece called Cornet Carillon by Ronald Binge, and if you imagine that each cornet is a single ukulele string, one cornet starts, and then before that one's finished his note, this one comes in. So although you hear a tune, it's actually a sort of cascade of instruments that are overlapping with single notes, so you get sustain. It's like having massive... Uh, sustain on the on a, on a string instrument. But I think it's interesting that Ronald Binge wrote Cornet Carillon and uh, it was used for a beer advert years ago. Maybe there's a subliminal thing about binging, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, Jan Lum, or Jan Lummy, uh, Jan Lum, I suppose, says, I've often wondered how you start out the arrangements. Do you all, for example, sit in a circle, strumming away and work it out together? Or does George turn up and pass around the sheet music or something? Well, sometimes we do have an overt arrangement which somebody writes. Often it's me. Um, and then we have to kick it around and try and make it work within the uh, idiom of the, uh, the instrument, of the instruments. Uh, but sometimes we uh, sort of um, think of the patterns and styles that we normally use, uh, kind of imagining that each ukulele is a different drum in a drum choir, you know, so one goes boom, 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 and the other one goes ting, 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 and the other one goes did a little, did a little, and so everybody does a different thing, and they all fit together, uh, like uh, different drum parts. Uh, and if you're playing chords or single notes which fit together, uh, that can be quite an interesting way of putting a backing together instead of everybody strumming away. So no, we don't usually strum. We do any, anything else but really. Like... sort of thing. And someone else would do this. And then someone else might be doing this. someone else be going <laughs> 